What's going on? Move the Mouse here back in City Skylines with our how-to episode number five. And in this episode, we're going to cover a lot of the things from the Boomtown Milestone, which for this map is 2200 population. Maybe different if you're building on a different map uh, population count wise to reach that milestone, but the things you're unlocking should be the same. Now, again, there's a lot of things here that are specific to certain DLCs, so I'll be covering those each in their own video. But I do want to go over some of the basic transport options or industry specialization, and some of the policies, and I realize now that I forgot to mention some of the policies in the last video, so we can kind of deep dive into some of those. And then we have unlocked a ton of options for highway, some new buildings, most important, the cemetery. So let's dive in and talk about all those things. I think we'll get the cemetery out of the way very quickly because we need them. They're relatively cheap and they're easy to talk about. So. Cemeteries work just like any other city service. You plop it down somewhere and there are green lines where it will serve as well. There's also a happiness effect for cemeteries. So ideally, you want to try and get that in somewhere in your residential areas for two reasons. One, people die at their homes mostly. So this will be able to pick up those bodies, deliver them to the cemetery. We don't have water down here. Let's solve that problem real quick. But the cemetery is a, a, a pretty simple mechanic. They need to be close enough to where people are dying to pick up the bodies. They need to have routes, so don't stick them on a one way that has no accessibility into your city. But one thing to keep in mind is that once they fill up, they stop working. So you can either keep plopping different cemeteries down, which may not be a bad idea if you're new to the game because one of the unique buildings unlocks by having a certain number of cemeteries filled. But cemetery, really basic, underneath the health care and death care tab, we'll throw one down here that seems to cover that part of the town really well, and then we'll find a spot over here for one more. Um, maybe we can do it. We need more roads over here. I built this really tiny, simple grid. Let's at least build out one more block. Maybe we can extend this one over a little bit so that we don't have these intersections so close together. We can come down this way. Then we can build some streets off of this to fill in that zoning. Again, it's good to stagger with some three-way intersections occasionally. Four-way intersections cause a little bit more traffic. So we'll build out a little bit more space over here for some people to move into eventually. But for now, let's get a cemetery over here so that they have local coverage. Makes everybody happy. That's another thing that raises land value. We talked about that in the last episode. But parks, plazas, cemeteries, city services all make residents happy. And we can actually see some green arrows popping up and houses that were already built getting rebuilt and redesigned as they level up. Now we also have a new industry specialization in the form of ore. If we go into our info views and we go down to natural resources, we can see ore is kind of a light blue. So we could mine for things like coal over there. And you can see where those pockets are. The other thing is we've unlocked a new area. And when you go to unlock an area, when you click on it, it'll actually show you what kind of resources are within that tile. So in that tile, there's oil, there's farming land and forestry the only outside connection is the possibility for an airport to exist in that tile but everything else is pretty much landlocked and there's no highway there's no uh, rail in that tile but it will show you the resources so if you were wanting to mine ore don't buy that tile if we wanted to come up here that does have a fair amount of ore in that tile so we could buy that and specialize the zone in that again that works the same as we did before by going to the district tools, you can come over here to the industry specializations tab and we can stamp a ore specialization on it. So any industry that moves in would focus on that particular type. Now you can put any type of specialization anywhere. The fact that there's no ore over here though would make those businesses completely ineffective and they would basically just build up and go out of business because there's nothing to mine. Something else to keep in mind with ore and oil 
is that they are not renewable by default. There is a cheat where you can say unlimited ore and oil, but that also removes your ability to um, have achievements. And I think it takes some fun out of the game. It's fun to kind of deal with the limitations. Forestry and farming are completely renewable. So as long as it is fertile farming land, and as long as there are trees nearby, those can always be planted and regrown. So those are a little bit easier when you're first starting out. Now, this episode, we've skipped over a bunch of policies. I definitely want to get into that. And I want to talk about highways and bus. And I think that's a, a decent amount uh, that we can cover here. So let's jump into policies first. Actually, let's take a quick look at our garbage coverage. What's our recycle plant doing? We have one recycle plant for the entire town. And it is not doing so hot in terms of its ability to service everybody. So let's get another one in right across the street. So that, that pollution bubble and noise pollution bubble aren't really affecting anything but industry. That'll get more trucks onto the road. The other thing you can do as a temporary fix is in the economy tab and budget, you can always go over budget, but it's less effective in the long run. So I can crank up electricity to make my plants work harder, uh, water pumping. Uh, if we increase the budget on garbage, there's more garbage vehicles that are sent out. Same thing with healthcare. It'll send out more ambulances and hearses to pick up the dead people. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is if you're modifying your budgets, there is a day night option on consoles and there's two separate sliders on the PC. So if you are playing with the day night cycle on, I'm playing with day only mode. I only have to worry about daytime budgets, but if you were playing with day and night then you have to balance the budget independently between those two, you might have obviously a lot more electricity usage at night when it is dark than you do during the day. So just something to keep in mind there. But let's dive in and talk about policies for a moment. And remember, there are two ways to do this. So if I want to affect a policy citywide, I can just go into policies and that is a policy for everybody. If I want a policy for a specific district, you can go to the district tool, interact with the district, go to the policies button. And then that is, as you can see at the top, a policy just for the sunset district. So we could affect the change there, but not elsewhere on the map. So when we go in this way, we're affecting policies for the entire city. It's not district specific at this point. And there's some things that definitely I want to do for the entire city, like recycling slightly reduces garbage accumulation, but it also slightly reduces tax income. But it basically means you are dealing with less garbage and that slightly reduced tax income means that you also don't have to spin up new facilities and pay to keep them up and running. Uh, again, recycling plants are my favorite. If you don't have Green Cities DLC though, you have the dump and that works just like the cemeteries. Once they fill up, they stop working and you have to provide another building or you have options later on that you'll unlock. So for processing dead bodies, you have a crematorium and for processing garbage, you'll have an incinerator so you can burn it off. But obviously if you're burning off garbage, that's gonna cause pollution. So that's something to keep in mind. Recycling plant, if you have it, is definitely, I think the best option. Now we talked about previously in the last episode uh, how parks can increase land value and this policy will actually increase the land value around those parks and plazas. It does increase the budget of parks and plazas by 20%, but increasing the land value increases people's happiness and makes them more willing to pay for taxes. So if we look at land value right now, you can see that we're starting to get out of the blue, which is kind of the middle land value. And we're starting to tip towards the green in some of these areas. So let's enable that policy and then we'll hit play. And we'll see how much of a difference that makes. So info views, land value, we'll hit play. Three times speed. And you can see buildings are leveling up. So those little green arrows that we see popping up and you can see again, buildings that are already built that are rebuilding themselves are affected by that so they'll they'll level up and we'll slowly see this this blue circle start to get bigger and bigger and bigger starting to tip towards the green more and more i'm hoping that all those dump trucks i sent out are able to deal with the garbage you can see how many of them are kind of clogging up this uh this roundabout so uh i do notice that we've got some problems happening up here with water and in the last episode i'm pretty sure we put our water budget at 100 percent so now it is time to add more pumps to 
we come down here, we're in the yellow for both. I'm going to put it as close to that other existing one as I can. I'm going to do the same thing over here with sewage. We'll go just outside of it. And then we just need to connect those up with pipes. And we're effectively doubling our water capacity for both uh, pumping and outputting sewage. So if we wanted to, we could go right back into budget and knock that budget down. So we're not paying so much for it. Let's go to 75% and see what that looks like. So that's just into the yellow already at 75%. So let's go into economy and we'll make it 85. And that should get us a little bit up into the green. There we go. And we can crank it to 100 once we start to get warnings again. We'll see how garbage does. We can probably stand to buy a new tile because this is starting to get a little clogged. It's not too bad yet, but this will be problematic. And at some point we'll want to carry the highway underneath or over maybe through this area, maybe even across the water to the other side, link it up to that highway. You have lots of options. We do have the ability to buy another area if we wanted to. So maybe for a future project, we could connect down there because that also has rail access, which will be good to talk about in a few episodes. So I'm just going to kind of build, keep building in a, a straight line here. You have nine tiles total when all is said and done. You have the middle tile and you can go two out from any direction. So I can go two to the left and then up and down. Um, but you can't kind of build, like, say, off in a diagonal off to the edge of the map. You're only going to be able to build so far from that center square, uh, at least on consoles. There is a mod called 81 tiles or slightly more forgiving on your CPU. I think 25 tiles that will let you kind of zone out everything that is initially available and 81 tiles on the PC will let you build way off into the fog to the very edge of the map where uh, there is an infinite void. So, uh, but yeah, you've, you've definitely got ability to expand uh, either way. Even with just the nine tiles, you can make it work. If you're on PC though, definitely check out 81 tiles. Very cool mod if you have a, a powerful enough machine. Back into policies though, because there's a couple that I want to talk about. We turned on parks and recreation. We turned on recycling. We can turn on recreational use. So this um, slightly increases tax income, which is always a good thing. Increases tourism. Reduces the crime rate, but it does increase the police budget. But all in all, I think that's a really good one for making money for your town. And then this one and another one that we'll unlock shortly um, are very useful depending on if you want to focus one way or the other, industry versus office. So let's talk about the differences between those two. We haven't unlocked office zoning yet, I don't believe. We unlock it very soon, I think. At 7,500. Let's, let's let it play on, on three times speed. Let's see. Uh, we need more residents. Apologies. Let me do that real quick. Let's get people moving in down here. Let's make sure they're watered. So that should give us some room to move some people in. So back to industry versus office. So if we look at info views, standard industry causing all kinds of pollution. You can see where our pollution is on the map. It's the sewage that's going down the river. It is the industry area. And that's about it. Everything else is good for the environment. Farming, forestry, housing, commercial. They don't cause pollution. They do create garbage, but they don't cause pollution. Now, standard industry is going to be able to support uh, less educated workers better than, say, office space. You can interact with the building using the inspector tool or just left clicking with no tool selected. And this will bring up some info about that building. And we can see it has 16 of 16 workers right now. And there are so many slots for uneducated versus educated well and highly. Highly basically being those that have graduated university. And you can see that the industry jobs definitely slant more towards uneducated workers. Though once they level up, they do have more slots for potentially uh, higher educated population. If you look at something like our commercial businesses, 
Those are going to slant more towards the middle, and then offices are going to slant more towards highly educated. The nice thing about office, office, when we unlock it, does meet industrial demand. So if there's a big demand for industry, you can use the office zones to meet that. As long as people are educated, they should have no problem finding jobs there. And also, office does not pollute either noise or ground pollution. So it's a great buffer zone. You don't want your residents living right next to the industry, but if we built some office blocks in here before moving in residents, it gives you a nice little buffer zone. So the reason that I wanted to cover that real quick is because when we go into policies, you kind of want to go one way or the other. You could do this district specific, but generally as a citywide policy, schools out and education boost don't make any sense if you have them both on, citywide at least. Because schools out is basically uh, encouraging people to go to work instead of university, and education boost is the opposite. People will choose education over working. So if you're going with an office heavy town, I would say definitely go education boost. If you're going more industry heavy, schools out can be a better option. And it might even be something like up here, like if you didn't wanna build a university up here, and you just wanted people that kind of lived up here to go work on the farms, the forestry or commercial, uh, you could do schools out and basically encourage them after high school to just go on to, to work in a, a job. If you wanted more of a downtown area with offices, then you could do the opposite and use that boost education policy. But I just kind of needed to explain that because it's, again, kind of, you don't want both in the city, but you might do it on a, a per district basis. Now we did unlock recycled plastic. I think that's actually a, the next milestone, but this makes recycling centers work at plus 20% efficiency. It does have a cost associated with it, but the more efficient they can be, the less plants you have to put in and the less upkeep you have to pay on those. So generally it's a good return in the long run. And we have other tabs too for taxation, which we haven't unlocked yet. We'll do that at 7,500. City planning also has a number of cool ones. Uh, one is heavy traffic ban. That you need to be very careful with, and that is definitely going to be a district-specific policy. Because if you ban heavy traffic, basically all your industry is going to go out of business because you can't have trucks, and trucks can't deliver goods, they can't export those goods. So don't, don't do a heavy traffic ban on your entire city. You could do it in select areas. So if we wanted to keep, say, trucks out of this residential area that we're trying to get maybe to a commercial zone that we'll build down here later, that's totally fine. But commercial businesses need trucks to deliver goods. So make sure that if you have a commercial main street like I have right here, this is all commercial businesses along this main strip that runs right here into the roundabout, you don't want to have heavy traffic ban set on something like that. Otherwise, all these businesses will shut down, unfortunately. Let me actually show you that. I was going to skip ahead, but I think this is worth... Because this, this took me a bit to figure out. So we have Old Town up there, right? If we wanted to, say, allow trucks to use this road, but wanted to discourage them from coming down into these neighborhoods, again, this street here is all the commercial business. So we could create a new zone. I'm going to delete this zone. And I'm going to draw a new district here. But I don't want to go all the way over to that road on the right. Because we do want trucks to use that way. But for example, if we didn't want them coming down this street to turn down through our residential area, we could apply a district specific policy here. So you can actually click on the district name with no tool selected on PC or go to the inspect districts and then click on that on consoles and then we can do a district specific policy so this will allow us to do city planning heavy traffic ban on that area and we get that little icon right there the truck with the uh, slash through it so again this will prevent trucks from coming into this zone I feel like we should trim that back just ever so slightly so that it's not intersecting with the road to be safe like that Old Town still allows heavy traffic, which supports this commercial strip. But the Cooper District, or Cooper Park, does not. So if I was trying to get down here to a business as a truck, that would force me to 
path this way instead. So I'd have to come down this road and then maybe turn in down that way. So that can be really useful. It's just one of those things that you can really break stuff if you don't apply that just right though. So be careful with that one. Uh, we'll talk about these top ones when we unlock them. There's some of my favorites, but in the meantime, encourage biking is always a good thing. That'll enable more of your Sims to choose bicycling instead of cars for getting around the city. And you'll be able to actually improve that at the last milestone we unlocked is uh, bike lane roads. So let me show you that real quick. If you wanted to upgrade an existing segment, maybe this crossroad that goes into Cooper Park, we could give bikes priority. So we're going to get rid of the parking lane. You see all those cars parked on the side of the road. Those disappear because there's no parking now because that is a bicycle lane. And that's a great way to start reducing traffic before you're able to drop things like Metro in. Now, one other trick that I'd like to show you, because it's not as easy on, there's an, an easy way to do it on PC. If we wanted to say a crosswalk here, uh, there is a pedestrian, what is it called? Pedestrian crossings mod on PC. Not something that we have an option for on consoles, but if I had a really long block and I wanted crosswalks in the middle of it, you'll notice that there's crosswalks at every intersection. You can kind of trick the game out I'm going to upgrade just this middle segment to, let's do tree line streets. Again, that'll get rid of the parking lane. But when it changes road types, it also creates a crosswalk. Now, you don't have to necessarily do it that big of a segment. If we wanted to, we could go to roads. Let's go straight tool. I'm going to come one shy of five. Will it let me? Not exactly. So let's go there and there. So you could build a really tiny segment of road if you wanted to. We'll do grass lined here. And it does the same thing. So you can kind of force these crosswalks. Pedestrians recognize these right away. So if you had a park maybe that spanned two blocks, you could very easily let people cross from one side to the other without having to walk all the way down the block, all the way around, and come back in. So kind of a useful tip, and one that I really like to uh, to mention to, uh, to console players. We don't have mods, so sometimes we have to trick the game out a bit. The other thing that I wanted to cover today are our new roads, and specifically we've unlocked highways and different intersections. So if we wanted to come in here and clean this up, remember this mess that I made earlier? Let's delete this. We've got 130,000 in the bank. We should be able to do this just fine. We're going to have to delete some stuff, though. So let's delete all of this and make room. And we're going to drop in a highway intersection. Instead of this handmade one, we'll try and do this a little bit neater. So we'll come on over to roads. The tab over here is intersections. And let's see what we have for space here. This actually takes up a ton of room, unfortunately. So if we wanted to kind of line that up, we kind of have to break half of this block, probably. Let's do that, and then we'll remove these businesses because they're not they're not zoned anymore. These houses are also inaccessible. So we'll move a couple people out, unfortunately, but that's okay. In the name of progress and expansion, sometimes we have to do those things. So uh, left and right in the D-pad, we'll move it, uh, rotate it, I should say. And then you also, let's see if we can get relatively straight here. I think that's pretty good. In the grand scheme of things, we might also be able to do this. So if you delete one little extra segment on the side, it'll actually let that snap a little easier. That would help if I um, deleted more housing. We're really trying to kind of cram this in here. So let's just, we'll do as, as good as we can. The other thing that's worth noting is just like you can raise a road segment, you could raise the entire highway, right? So you could raise that up if you wanted to have roads that ran underneath. But for us, we're just going to keep this on the ground for right now. So let's get a look at this. We'll get it as, as centered as we can. Just want to rotate. There's a tiny little click in between that uh, I think that one will work. So we'll get this as centered as we can, then we're going to connect our highway back up. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do 
for uh, kind of merging these roads together. So we'll go back over here. Now we've unlocked highway. And depending on whether you have mass transit or not, you may have limited choices for highways. Um, if you have mass transit, you'll also have two lane and four lane highways. I want to say the only thing you have an option for is three lane highway and exit ramps by default. But I, I could be mistaken. Um, I've been playing with the DLC for so long, I forget. Let's grab the regular highway tool though. Just basic highway. This is exactly what your highway on map is going to be. It's three lanes. And we will use the curve tool so we can kind of hook this back in. So that's not too awkward of a bend. Now, if you wanted to nitpick it, a trick that I always like to do is connect that and then break one more segment on either side. And that will generally, if you curve it in one more time, it'll give you a little bit smoother of a, a curve. That looks a little bit less jagged. Highways also, because they're one way, go in the direction that you draw them. So if I draw a highway like that, it's going to go in that direction. If I do the same thing over here, it's going to be the wrong direction. We can hold Y or triangle or go to the exclamation point tool in the bottom left of the PC interface, and that will enable you to change the direction of roads. If we have an incorrect segment, it'll give us that little pop-up icon, basically because you have a road going that way to a road going this way, and this segment just does not work, so you have to reverse the direction on that. Now, the other place that we have that icon is right over here. So, what I generally like to do here, now, this is a four-lane road. This is effectively six lanes. So there's two ways we can do this. We could make this into a six lane, maybe even with some trees, right? Kind of a nice look. And then we can kind of hook these in. So let me show you how I do that. The other way we could have done that is if we wanted to leave this four lane and if you have mass transit, you can do it with the two lane highways. But let me show you what I have in mind here. So if we do curve tool, I'm going to come almost all the way down and just hook it in at the last second. I'll do the same thing over here. I probably should have done that one first because of the way these hook. It's a little off center. So I'm hoping it will let us do that. But that's okay. This is a good example of another trick that I like to use. If that road won't fit, you can try and use a smaller road and then upgrade it after. So now I'll go over to my highway tool. I'll upgrade this segment and I'm hoping it'll let me do it it will and then we can reverse direction there we go so now we've got three lanes coming in two three lanes the weird thing here though is they will not use the left lane because they think that that's a turning lane to go over there Tra traffic manager present edition on uh, PC can fix that on console unfortunately we've got nothing so um, just try and keep in mind that you may have some kind of funky behavior there, though there's no reason that people should be getting off the highway to get back on the highway. It should be faster for them to just path on the highway, unless for some reason they were changing direction on the highway and then coming back out. But that's pretty unlikely, at least, because we don't have anything built up here yet, but, but it could be the case. We'll talk about mass transit in its own episode, and maybe we'll go over some of the advanced power options but I think that's a good spot to break for today. Clean up our highway a little bit. Let's hit play so that everybody finds where they're supposed to be now. But hopefully that gave you some tips and tricks and some ideas to uh, continue building your city successfully. Let me know if you have questions in the comments down below. And most importantly, if you really want to get involved in the discussion, come on over to the Discord and have a chat there because it's not just me answering the comments. It's an entire community of really helpful people. So stop by and see what it's all about. If you did enjoy the video, likes, comments, and shares really help the channel and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications for updates to this and other series. Follow me on Twitter, join that Discord. And until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.